Jerry at Fair Oaks. Come on, Jerry. Can't you run any faster? Hey, your legs are longer than mine. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, for the love of Mike Lee. Come on, we, we've got to get to Linwell's house before, before... the man sees us. Yeah, I know. But what are we going to say when we get there? What do you mean? Well, I mean, we're not supposed to let Harold know anything about this. Oh, golly, I forgot. Well, how can we tell Mr. Linwell without letting Harold know? Well, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to figure it out when we get there. Yes, but we should have some sort of an idea. I'll tell you. What? I'll ask Carol to get us a glass of water, and when he goes out into the kitchen, we'll tell Mr. Linwell we've got something very important to tell him, and that he's got to get rid of Harold for a few minutes. Yeah, that's good. Okay, come on. Well, we made it. I was watching the windows of Mrs. Cooper's boarding house, and I didn't see anybody looking out. Oh, you can't tell, though. You might have been back from the window someplace where you couldn't see him. Yeah, that's right. Well, hello, boys. Come in. I'm awfully glad to see you. Thanks, Mr. Linwell. But where's Harold? Isn't he here? Uh, yes, Jerry, he's here. Harold's, well, he's feeling pretty badly right at the moment. I felt it was the best thing to tell him about all this mess. And he took it rather hard, poor kid. Oh, say, that's too bad. Gee, yeah. Well, did you really have to? I mean, well... I know what you mean, Jerry. Yes, I felt it was the best thing to let Harold know about it, because if he does... He can keep an eye out for himself, too. Yeah, that's right. Well, come in, boys. Mr. Linwell, we've got something very important to tell you. Will it be all right to talk about it before Harold? Oh, yes, it's all right now. I think we should all know about everything that's going on. Yeah, I do, too. Right in here, boys. This is the living room. Hmm. Where's Harold? Harold? Oh, Harold, where are you? I'll be back in a minute. He's uh, probably getting rid of any evidence the little crying spell he had a minute ago. Don't mention it to him, will you, boys? No, 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 we won't. Well, sit down, fellas. If you don't mind, I'll take this chair. It's a little better for my leg. Mm -hmm. I think Thank so. You. Mm, well, let's wait till Harold gets here before you say what you have to say, boys. Yeah, okay. Well, did you walk up to the school and back tire you any, Mr. Linwell? Oh, no, not at all. Well, hello, Harold. Hiya, Harold. Hello, fellas. Sit down, son. The boys have something to tell us. All right, now? What is it, fellas? Oh, well, go ahead, Jerry. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Linwell, we seen the man who was in the shack on Woodman's Island. Oh, no. Dad. Do you really think you have? We know we have. He was in Mac's place just now, and he addressed an envelope with a gold fountain pen that exactly matched the gold pencil we found in the shack. Hmm. Well, Jerry, where'd he go? Did you see? Yes, we did. After he left Max, we followed him by cutting across the outer campus, and we watched him walk down this way. Oh, gee. Oh, it's all right, son. Don't worry now. Go on, Jerry. Well, he stopped and talked to Ralph Humrick, one of the cadets, and Ralph pointed up here to your house. Oh, well, this does look like our man, doesn't it? Well, that's what we thought, sir. And then after Ralph walked down Birch Street toward the front gate of the school, the man walked up and down in front of your house here. And then, finally, he walked down down the street and went into Mrs. Cooper's boarding house. Where's that? Uh, down at the end of the block, about five or six houses down. Hmm. Well, boys, I guess we're in for some fun. Fun? Gee, I don't call this fun. Uh, I mean excitement, Harold. 
Yes, I think this is the man I've been expecting. Expecting? Have you been expecting him, Mr. Linwell? Yes, Lee, I have. What do he look like? Well, he was quite tall and thin. He wore glasses, uh, gold-rimmed spectacles, uh, and he talked with an accent. Yeah, that's one of them. What do you mean, one of them, Dad? Well, son, I might as well tell you and the boys the entire story. We're all in the situation now, and it's, it's important that we know exactly what we're doing. About two weeks before I was to make the test flight on the new bomber, two men came to me and made me a proposition. They told me that they wanted me to make a fake force landing in a field near the airport, that they would be near in some trees, and that when I landed, they'd run out and take some pictures of the ship. Gee. I was also to give them the specifications and a copy of my log during the test flight. They told me they'd pay me $10,000. $10,000? That's right. I tried to find out who they were, but I couldn't get any more from them except that they were agents of some foreign government. Spies? Yes, exactly. Spies. Of course, after they told me what they wanted, I just laughed them off and thought nothing more about it. Except, of course, to tell Bill Layton, the president of the company I worked for, and he got in touch with agents of our government right away, and I was trailed night and day. You were trailed? What for? Oh, no, not account of me, Harold. They were trying to pick up the men who had contacted me, but they never showed up again. Well, as a part of the test, I was to drop a couple of dummy bombs into a field. The field had been roped off and people were kept away from it. And just as I got over the field and was ready to drop the first bomb, I noticed a little white flag, the one that you boys read about in the papers. Yeah. And just after I dropped the first dummy bomb, something started going wrong with ignition. And, well, of course, that's when the crack-up happened. Well, what's this man here for now, Mr. Linwell? I mean, why did he come to Farrell? Undoubtedly to keep me from talking. Oh, I get it. They haven't had time to get out of the country yet. And so this man is going to try to do something to you so you won't tell the government that he's still here. Is that it, Mr. Linwell? That's what I think, Jerry. Oh, golly, this is awful. No, it, it isn't awful. The only thing I've got to do is to get a message to Bill Layton without this man knowing that I've sent it. Well, we can do that for you. No, I, I don't think you can, Jerry. I'm afraid that as soon as this man finds out that you two boys and Tubby Young are particular friends of Harold, you'll be watched, too. See, I know how we can do it. How? Corporal Dent. Yeah, that's right. He knows all about this, too. I mean, he knows about the man being on the island and everything. Yeah, sure he does. Well, I think an easier way would be to have Car Captain Gardner take care of it. Oh, sure. I, I didn't think of Captain Gardner. You see, boys, he knows about this, too. And I think he'll be in much... Look! Oh, Jiminy, don't yell like that, Lee. What's the matter, Lee? There's the man. What? Yes. That's one of the two men who first talked to me. Yeah, and he's coming in here. Uh, Quick, boys, into that other room. Yeah, come on, Harold. No, let Harold stay here. Just you and Jerry Lee. All right, come on, Jerry. Yeah, okay. And close the door and don't say a word, boys. Right. Just listen. Yes. Yeah, sure. Come with me, Harold. Okay. How do you do, Mr. Linwell? How do you do? I have come with another proposition. I should like to have a talk with you. Yes? What about Ah, this is your son? Yes, this is my boy, Harold. Uh, Mr... I don't believe I've ever known your name. No. I have not thought it necessary before this to inform you. My name is Jorga. Alexander Jorga. Yes? Well, what is it you want now? I thought I made it clear to you once before that I had nothing to give you or sell you. I thought I was quite explicit when I told you I wasn't in the slightest interested in discussing my affairs, nor yours with you. Yes, <laughs> you were quite explicit. My associates and I understood your attitude perfectly, Mr. Linwell. But now, uh, well, the picture has somewhat changed. Changed? I fail to see how it's changed anyway. I'm still not interested in anything you have to say. No? Hmm. Mr. Linwell, this is a fine-looking boy you have here. Go on. That is all. Is it possible that you do not follow my reasoning? It's a good thing for you that I'm crippled up the way I am. Yes, Mr. Linwell. I took that into consideration. But if you think you can keep me from talking about your dirty proposition to me before my last test flight by threatening my that son... That is exactly what I think, Mr. Linwell. I am certain that when you realize how it might be possible for us to make you and uh, your son extremely unhappy, and shall we say uncomfortable, I am sure you will, as you say, think twice before you reveal anything to the agents of your government. Yes? <clears throat> Suppose we leave it up to my son... Ah, very, very clever of you. That is an extremely intelligent idea. We will see what the boy has to say. Harold, you know what I've told you about this man? Yes, Dad? 
And you've heard how he's threatened to harm you if I tell our government what the plans of this man and his confederates are? Yes, sir. I know. Harold, shall I tell our government or not? Sure, Dad. Sure. Tell them. I'm not afraid. There you are. Now, if you have an answer to that. Yes, Mr. Linwell, I do have an answer to that. It is very simple. If you make any move to communicate with the agents of your government, I shall not be responsible for the consequences to your son. Get out of here. Go on, get out. Yes, I was about to leave. Good day, Mr. Linwell. And good day, too, to you, my boy. What, what do you think he'll do, Dad? Nothing, nothing. He won't do a thing. You're absolutely all right, Harold. Don't worry. Oh, I'm not worrying. He can't scare me, the big lug. Oh, that a boy. Lee, Jerry, come on out. Golly, Mr. Linwell, what are you going to do? He sure sounded as though he means business, didn't he? Of course he means business. And that's exactly the reason why he must move fast. You bet. What do you want us to do, Mr. Linwell? Jerry, I, I want you and Lee to get a note that I'm going to write to Captain Gardner as fast as you can. Well, sure, anything you say. But, well, well, don't you think this Yorga will see Jerry and me if we leave the house now? No, Lee. There's a side entrance to the house that opens into the driveway going back to the garage. Yeah, I saw it as we came in. All right, then. You can go out there or run back the alley that opens into Court Street. By that time, you'll be too far away for anyone to see you. Yes, and I'll bet Jerry and I can run faster than that man, too. You bet you can. All right, I'll write that note over here on the desk. Gee, Harold, that was swell of you to talk up to that man the way you did. You bet it was. Oh, that wasn't anything. Say, my dad's the most important thing in the world to me. I'm not going to let him tell lies to the government just on account of me. I wonder if your dad will keep you here or whether he'll let you come back to the school. I don't know. We'd better ask him when he gets through. Oh, I think we'd better quit talking now. Mr. Linwell's trying to write a darn important letter. Oh, yeah. There. Now, which one of you boys wants to carry this? Uh, I'll carry it, sir. Good. Here you are. Okay. Uh, do you think I ought to hide it? I mean, put it in my shoe or something, someplace where nobody will find it? Oh, no, I, I don't think that's necessary, Jerry. It's more impor important that you get to Captain Gardner as quickly as you can. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Linwell. Yes, Lee? Do you want Harold to stay here, or shall we take him with us to the school? Oh, I, I think he'd better stay here right now, for two reasons. First, because I think he'll be safer here until we can get somebody to guard him. And second, because I think probably you two boys can make better time without him. Yeah, I can't run as fast as you fellas. All right. Come on, Jerry. You got that note put away? Yep. It's right here in the pocket of my coat. Okay, come on then. Yeah. Come this way, boys, through the dining room. Here. Let me look out first. All right. The coast is clear. Okay. Here we go. Thanks, boys. Oh, it's okay. Gee, this is sure awful, isn't it? Yeah. Golly, Lee, I, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to turn out for the riding practice till this thing is cleared up or not. Oh, sure you will. You can't let it get you down. Yeah, but, well, just thinking about anything happening to Harold... I, I know how you feel, and I feel the same way, but... Well, Mr. Linwell and Captain Gardner will be able to figure something out. You'll see. We won't have to worry about it much longer. I'll bet the government will send some men here right away. Yeah, I sure hope so. Mm -hmm. 